What is the value of knowledge? And how can you both acquire and then deploy knowledge in order to leverage that value? Create more knowledge, create more value in a wonderful, virtuous circle uh, that is the basis of civilization. It has been important but difficult to measure what you could actually do with the knowledge that you acquired when the distance between the moment of acquisition and the moment of application was very long. Or, as many of us suspect for certain subjects that uh, we are compelled following in high school, never happens. The moment of putting that particular kind of knowledge at use actually doesn't occur. In the Middle Ages, maybe this was shorter, because, of course, the knowledge that you would acquire from your father, from your uncle, as a farmer, uh, working the land, would be of immediate practical use, of vital applicability. And you would be uh, learning by doing. Uh, there would be no distinction between theoretical lessons and uh, practical applications. It was all uh, a unified system uh, that uh, evolved, uh, but uh, really uh, supported the kinds of uh, applications that were needed. The accumulation of knowledge leads to specialization, where not every action has to be invested in order to produce calories for survival. And this generates levels of abstraction where we are ever more removed in our immediate understanding of how knowledge is applied to useful purposes. Or, the contrary happens, our definition of usefulness is changed, evolved, from the mere production of food and survival to entertainment, to uh, research, uh, to the organization of uh, society, politics, and so on. However, understanding the value of knowledge remains important, actually even more so. It has been pretty dramatic how, especially in the United States, the cost of education increasing uh, uh, obliged a lot of people to uh, go into debt in order to get a degree that they are supposed to get in order to find a job that rather than giving them a better uh, financial future is then needed to pay back the capital and interest on the debt that they took out to start. There is an extremely interesting and intriguing new trend, which enables people to learn and earn, or even better, earn through learning. And of course, there are societies uh, where the fact that studying is beneficial to society at large is already recognized. Either education is free or education actually is actively supported financially by the states uh, through payments that go to uh, students that can use those payments for housing, for food, uh, for uh, any uh, other purpose. But in countries where it is not organized like this, 
the new opportunities offered by this model, learn to earn, is uh, extremely captivating. Uh, I am uh, referring to two uh, different approaches. One of them is uh, called the income share agreements, where actually the cost of uh, learning uh, is supported by another organization, maybe the training organization itself, uh, in exchange uh, of a share of the future income of the person who is learning. And there can be different parameters in the income sharing agreements of uh, what type of job is linked to the agreement. Of course, uh, if you learn programming, but you end up flipping burgers, uh, uh, there is no a causal relationship between one and the other. Uh, but if you learn programming and you find a job as a developer, then of course, uh, it is natural to conclude that your increased skills led to that. Another parameter can be uh, for how long. Uh, it is expected that uh, uh, if you find a job that should be immediately attributed to the training organization that helped you, uh, or what is the percentage that you pay of your monthly salary uh, over what time period, whether there is a maximum, that uh, um, a ceiling that you can hit and uh, above the ceiling you don't have to pay anything and so on. In general, what we are talking about is uh, the very natural need to improve skills in order to improve employability, in order to uh, find a, a professional trajectory that goes in the right direction. Torre. Uh, on the URL torre.co uh, is a platform uh, that allows you to uh, define your professional profile. And Torre introduced Torre Coach, which exactly like I just described, uh, nurtures and helps and, and supports uh, a professional in identifying how to improve uh, its uh, skills, how to maximize uh, uh, its uh, ambitions, uh, how to find uh, a better job at the end. The second uh, model that I am referring to uh, when I talk about learn to earn uh, is a series of experiments uh, based on blockchain where micro tasks of learning are directly rewarded with crypto payments. There are interesting precedents uh, to this. For example, PayPal, when it was born, uh, would pay you $10 uh, if you opened an account. And for a certain time, this would apply to not only you, but to some other person that you referred. So the new person that uh, used your referral code would get $10 as well as you because you referred them $20. And of course, this was very expensive. For some time, uh, the investor's money uh, would go out in large part uh, for PayPal's uh, fueling this kind of growth uh, acquiring uh, users with money. Now, in their case, it was directly related to the use of the platform itself, which was about money. And uh, the more people used PayPal, the more uh, it would be attractive, classic network effects of a platform. More recently, uh, the desire to pay users if they joined the platform was employed by Coinbase. Uh, it is still an up and running program. If you um, sign up on Coinbase with someone's referral code, and by the way, mine is Coinbase 
uh, uh, com slash David Orban or something similar. I don't remember it precisely. Both you and the person who referred you will earn uh, $10 uh, as uh, the date of this recording. But the newer systems are not about simply attracting people on a platform. They are about actually proving uh, the intricacies, the objectives, the features and characteristics of those platforms and proving that you can actually put that knowledge to use. Not only a theoretical acquisition of the knowledge, but the practical application of the knowledge. And uh, the blockchain-based uh, crypto systems, of course, in some part are about money, so it is easy to link uh, the acquisition of this knowledge to the payment and then eventually the deployment of that uh, uh, little crypto payment to some use uh, of the platform itself. But there will and there are potentially other uses as well where this mechanism, uh, where proving that you learn something earns you uh, concrete payment and then you put that payment to use can be exploited and can be an interesting way to acquire acquiring skills, improving um, knowledge about modern applications uh, in the world. So I invite you to hunt for these uh, opportunities. Um, one of them uh, has been just uh, started by Balaji Srinivasan, uh, previously uh, with Coinbase, previously still with uh, a company at the time called 21 that uh, wanted to produce Bitcoin mining USB sticks uh, that would be um, available everywhere. And now Balaji started a new website uh, called 1729. So on 1729, you can sign up and there are all kinds of tasks, uh, each gamified, each incentivized, so that you learn and you earn. Whether you embrace the program available on Torre Coach, whether you embrace the kinds of uh, crypto-based uh, uh, learning uh, tasks and units, like on 1729, the center of the matter is that you should always keep learning. Because in our jolting times, the half-life of knowledge is pretty short. And what you acquire uh, must be put at good use. And it can. It can be both for your own benefit as well as sharing the knowledge with others. The beauty of these uh, schemes is that they incentivize sharing rather than hoarding knowledge for the benefit of the entire human civilization.